Acts 27 and verse number 9. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix, and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there rose against us against it a tempestuous wind called the Eurachlodon. And when the ship was called and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into quicksands, struck sail, and so were driven." And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, Ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them to sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be a good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me, howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. You can be seated this evening. I appreciate you standing <coughs> as we read the Word of God together. I want you to look back with me at verse number 25 where the Bible says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. What was told unto Paul is in verse number 24, Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. I believe what the very thrust, the heart, and the message of what was delivered to Paul and Paul delivered to all of those that were on that ship in that storm was simply this thought tonight, and it is a thought of encouragement. I believe if there's anything that we need in this day and hour, it is some encouragement around the house of God. Amen. There is enough discouragement in the world. But when you come to the house of God, thank God, uh, you can find some encouragement around the things of God. I believe what Paul was saying through the revelation of God uh, was we're going to make it. Now I'm thankful for that tonight. I know it may not seem like it a lot of times, but I want to remind you we're going to make it. It may not look like it sometimes, uh, but I want to remind us tonight that we're going to make it. And it may not feel like it, and I'm glad I'm not going on my feelings tonight, but I'm glad to report in we're going to make it. Hallelujah. I bless His name tonight for those good words of encouragement. I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know what you're facing in your life. 
but I do want to report in. You're going to make it tonight, and I am going to make it. This chapter is given to the description of Paul's voyage to Rome and the fourth shipwreck that Paul had experienced. It's interesting to me that Luke the physician records in graphic detail the journey that, that has been corroborated by modern writers. Many have studied and examined uh, these verses of Scripture that's found in chapter number 27. And, and we don't need it tonight, but they have, they have confirmed that what has been told in chapter number 27 is of a truth. Now that is, that is a lot to be said because this is a, a whole chapter given to this storm and also this shipwreck. Paul's desire was to go to Rome as a preacher, but he went as a prisoner and ended up preaching. Don't you like that? You say, preacher, what does that mean? That means that God is in control. Paul wanted to go to Rome as a preacher. And though he didn't go the way he thought he would go, he still yet went and he wound up doing what he wanted to do when he got there. The Bible said in Acts 23 and in verse number 11, And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, uh, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. It was determined, I love this tonight, it was determined by the counsel of God, hallelujah, before it was determined by the counsel of Festus that Paul would go to Rome. Amen. I wonder tonight if you would just thank God with me that God is in control of all of our lives tonight. Amen. I mean, when it may seem like it's out of our control, I'm glad God is in control of all of our lives. God Almighty had already determined that Paul would go to Rome long before this earthly council had ever convened. God had already determined that. Aren't you glad you serve that kind of God? I'm not just feeling my way through this world. Hallelujah, I got a God that's ordering my path tonight and every step I take, God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul was familiar with a lot of things that you and I do not want to be familiar with. When you think about the life of Paul, uh, uh, you understand that he was familiar with stonings. I've never been stoned physically. I've had some rocks through at me uh, uh, by other means, but I've never been stoned physically. Uh, uh, but Brother Doug, Paul uh, was familiar with stoning. Uh, you'll study the life of Paul. Uh, you'll find that he was familiar with stripes. Uh, I mean, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 11 uh, and in verse number 25, uh, the Bible said, Thrice was I beaten with rods, uh, once was I stoned, thrice uh, I suffered shipwreck, uh, a night and a day have I been in the deep, in journeys often in perils of water, in perils of robbers. Paul uh, uh, was familiar with stoning. Uh, Paul was familiar with stripes and Paul was familiar with storms. Now this sister testified just a while ago and no doubt she's been in a storm. I don't know if you're in a storm tonight or not but Paul was very familiar with storms. Let me say this and I'm hastening alone that something about storms tonight. Can I say this tonight that storms are likely in our life. 
very likely uh, are you and I to encounter uh, uh, storms in life. It is likely tonight uh, uh, that somewhere outside of Florence, Kentucky, uh, uh, because we already know it's been storming here today, but if it wasn't storming here today, uh, it is likely that it is storming somewhere uh, in this world. Can you say amen to that? Uh, I mean, if it's not storming where you are, it might be storming in California or it might be storming in Hawaii but it's likely to storm somewhere every day all the time and you say preacher what do you mean by that well can I say tonight that storms are very likely if it's not storming in your life it may be storming in somebody else's life and if it's not mentally tonight it may be emotionally or physically but storms are likely in our life. And may I say tonight that storms are lonely. Huh? I understand tonight that there was 276 aboard that ship in that storm and Paul had some close companions he had Luke of course that was with him he had Aristarchus that was with him but I wonder if you'll agree with me tonight that you can be in the most crowded room that you've ever been in and still feel all alone I know what that is to be sitting in a church full of people and still feel like I'm all by myself. I'm telling you the storms that you and I encounter in life are likely but a lot of times they're so lonely in life. And then I'd say this tonight that storms are not only likely and storms are lonely but storms are lengthy a lot of times. I mean, this, this storm, of course, we know lasted uh, uh, two weeks, 14 days is what we understand uh, uh, this storm to last. Uh, and Paul found himself uh, in this storm uh, uh, by nothing he did or didn't do. You'll find yourself in storms in life that it is not a result of anything uh, that you did or did not do. There's a lot of churches tonight, and I'm glad this church is not one of them, but there's a lot of churches tonight, Brother Doug, that are in a storm because of something the pastor has done. Amen. There's a lot of children in storms tonight because of something a parent has done. Our country is in a storm tonight uh, and it ain't got nothing to do with us. Uh, I'm just trying to help us tonight. Uh, but a country can find themselves uh, in a storm tonight uh, and all that you and I would understand, uh, we may be in a storm, ain't got one thing to do with anything we did or didn't do. I want you to notice, write these three things down for observation and then I'm going to give you what God's put on my heart you'll notice out of these verses of scripture there is what I want to say something about the assumption the Bible said in verse number 13 and when the south wind blew softly supposing that they had obtained their purpose loosing this they sailed close by Crete there is the assumption. In other words, that is a thing that is accepted as true or certain to happen without proof. They were just supposing. Well, there's been a lot of people that's got themselves in trouble for just supposing that they are to do what they're about to do. I mean, just assuming this is the right thing uh, for us to do. Paul had already warned 
uh, that sailing that time of year uh, would be disastrous. Uh, he said in verse number 10, uh, he said, I perceive, I perceive. Uh, you know what that means? Uh, that means to be a spectator of. Uh, in other words, Paul uh, is not receiving this by revelation. Uh, he is receiving this uh, by perception. Uh, he said, I done saw it with my own eyes. Uh, I've done witness this before uh, and we are about uh, uh, to wind up in a bad situation. Uh, I know uh, what's about to happen. Yeah, right. Children, listen to me tonight. Uh, when those parents tell you something uh, and it seems strange and it seems maybe outdated uh, or outlandish uh, and they say, listen, uh, I'm talking from experience. Uh, uh, you better heed to that mom and daddy. Uh, I'm telling you, church, tonight I love you uh, and I appreciate how uh, and what you do for the Lord. Uh, but when this man of God gets up here to preach uh, and he sounds out the warning, uh, uh, don't you reject that. Uh, uh, don't you uh, uh, turn your back upon that uh, I'm telling you uh, uh, God Almighty uh, uh, will give you a word uh, and don't you go uh, against what God says uh, uh, because some kind of wind uh, has begun to blow right. you see a lot of people are they are trying to go off the wind and not going off the word the wind will soon change. Help me right here. The wind will soon change. It'll blow this direction for a little bit, but it won't be long and it'll blow another direction. Uh, but somebody help me right here. Uh, uh, God's word uh, uh, will not change. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you, you put your faith uh, in what thus saith the word of God uh, and you will not go wrong. Warning signs were given, and I'm trying to hurry. The Bible said in verse number four, look at this. And when they had launched from thence, we sailed uh, under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. There's a warning sign, isn't it? Contrary winds. The Bible said in verse number seven, and when we had sailed slowly, days scarce uh, uh, were come over against uh, uh, send us the wind not suffering us uh, uh, we sailed under Crete over against Salomne and so there's there's another warning sign uh, and verse number 8 and hardly passing it came unto a place uh, which is called the fair havens hardly passing it uh, uh, you talking about going against the warning signs uh, uh, they went against those warning signs uh, and Paul said not only he perceived uh, uh, but he admonished uh, in other words in verse number 9 uh, now when much time was spent and was sailing was now dangerous uh, uh, because the fast was now already past uh, Paul admonished them uh, that word means he kept telling them uh, over and over and over again uh, I'm telling you I appreciate every man of God uh, every pastor and, uh, that will not give up uh, uh, telling what's right. Uh, oh, you say, preacher, they're not hearing it. Uh, you just keep telling it. Uh, you just keep directing them in the right way. Uh, and the Bible says uh, they will not get away from that. Amen. Lord, I've got to hurry. There's, there's a compromising word found in verse number 11 a compromising word nevertheless a centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul there's a compromising word there's a compressing weight the Bible said in verse number 12 and because the haven was not commodious to winter in uh, uh, there is the complimenting wind uh, that south wind begin to blow softly uh, 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 that, that south wind uh, uh, many have begun to study that long uh, after this is recorded uh, and they come to the conclusion uh, that that south wind was not a sign uh, of smooth sailing at all. Uh, that south
south wind was a sign that a storm was soon coming and you can't hey Lord's helping me right here you can't be moved with every wind that blows in your life oh my there's the assumption can you think with me tonight the word of God about how many people would have made a terrible mistake of just supposing just supposing uh, do you remember in Luke uh, 2 and verse number 44 uh, uh, when the parents of the Lord Jesus uh, went a day's journey and you know why they done that they supposed him to have been in their company uh, you better not take for granted you're traveling with the Lord uh, hey man tonight uh, you better make sure uh, he is in your company tonight thought about not only had they supposed but Acts 16 27 you remember in Acts 16 27 when that jailer or the keeper of the prison would have killed himself the Bible said supposing that all of the prisoners were free you remember that that morning of the resurrection Mary almost missed seeing the risen Savior uh, because she supposed him uh, uh, to have been the gardener hey uh, I, what I'm trying to say tonight church uh, on the close of this revival meeting uh, uh, don't you go off of your feelings uh, uh, don't you go off of just what you might assume uh, uh, but you make sure tonight uh, uh, that you know what God wants for your life Life, and I'm telling you you'll wind up in good shape if you'll follow what God is directing your life in there's not only the assumption tonight but I could say something quickly about the assistance the Bible said in verse number 14 not long after not long after there arose against us a tempestuous wind called the Eurocladon and when the ship was called and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. And, and, and there is work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship. I, what I noticed today, I was going back through this. And what I noticed was how it went from I and my in the first part of that chapter and it began to use those plural words, we and us. And brother, I'm telling you, there was assistance that was, that was used in the midst of that storm. In other words, Paul wasn't going to be able to do it all by himself and he wasn't going to be able to do it just Luke and Aristarchus, but it was going to take everybody help in the midst of that storm I'm telling you I thank God for the assistance of the people of God in my life in the storms all that was on board the ship are now working together people from all different walks of life Paul was a preacher there were people on that ship that was prisoners. But isn't it amazing? I'm talking about how, how difficulty, you let a little bit of difficulty arise. Hear me now. Let a little bit of difficulty arise. And difficulty will settle a lot of differences. Amen. People that used to pull against one another when things get hard to go to pulling with one another. Working together. That's what I'm seeing in those verses of Scripture. I believe what mattered before didn't matter anymore. They had, they had lost the steering, uh, uh, the, the control. I believe it was all hands on deck at that moment. Uh, they were using helps. They were using that old method of frapping. Uh, I don't have time to go into all of that, but I just want to say you ought to thank God. Listen, church, uh, you ought to thank God in the storms of your life. You look around at these people sitting on these church pews. Uh, that is those that's going to, assist you uh, uh, through the hard times of life uh, I've never had the world show up at my door uh, uh, with a casserole dish uh, uh, when I was going through a hard time or a death uh, uh, but I'm 
tell you it's the people of God uh, that are come by with a tear on their cheek uh, and a prayer on their lips uh, and say I just wanted to stop by uh, and say I'm praying for you uh, I love you uh, I'm here for you uh, uh, you ought to thank God brother I enjoyed the testimony uh, I look around the church uh, and see the faces of the people of God that's going to be who it helps you uh, uh, through the hard times of life Hallelujah for the church tonight and the people of God. Those assistants. And then I'm closing tonight not only the assumption and the assistants, but there's something to be said about this assurance. The assurance. The Bible said, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, boy, it had gotten dark. I'm talking about a uh, there was no sun and there was no there was no stars and no small tempest lay on us all hope uh, uh, that we should be saved was then taken away isn't that sad tonight there's nothing no more worse in this world than to see people that have no hope all hope is gone I'm telling you that is not our story tonight <laughs> Woo, amen. That is not our anthem tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, when it seems like all hope is gone, somebody help me right here. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Standing somewhere. I'm telling you, you'll find Jesus. Hallelujah. He knows where we are in the midst of our storms of life. Oh, praise God. Paul had spoken by perception and now Paul is speaking by revelation. Uh, he had been tossed around physically uh, uh, but emotionally and mentally and spiritually uh, he was not tossed. Uh, uh, Paul declares uh, uh, in verse number uh, 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 22 uh, uh, the Bible said uh, and now I exhort you uh, to be a good cheer for there shall be no loss uh, of any man's life among you but of the shield this is what Paul declares for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve and you know what Paul is saying in the midst of that storm he said heaven's on my side tonight he said the angel of the Lord stood by me are you seeing that tonight heaven's on my side hallelujah tonight I I'm glad to report in. Heaven's on our side. And I'm on heaven's side. I say blessed be the name of the Lord. They may not have knew where they were, but I'm glad the Lord knew where they were in the midst of that storm. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Bible says, the Bible says there was that assurance. Paul said there stood by me I mean, there, there is uh, uh, that, that one that is for us who is uh, uh, on our side saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. What a word of encouragement. What a word of encouragement. That's what I wanted to leave you with tonight. I didn't want to leave you on a sad note. I wanted to leave you on a good note. Amen. We're going to make it. Amen. That's what Paul is saying there. Uh, uh, church, listen. Uh, I may not never get back this way again, uh, uh, but you remember what I say tonight. Uh, uh, we're going to make it. Uh, you say, preacher, but the winds are blowing. Uh, I know the winds may be blowing, uh, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, uh, the Bible said in verse number 15 uh, and when the ship was called and could not bear up into the wind uh, we let her drive uh, I mean the winds are blowing uh, uh, but we're going to make it challenging winds uh, uh, you've never seen a more challenging time uh, in all of your life uh, uh, to live for the Lord uh, these are hard times difficult times uh, and those challenging winds are going to blow uh, but 
but we're going to make it. Amen. Uh, uh, there's changing winds. Uh, I'm telling you, people are changing all the time. Uh, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, and there's those chastening winds. Uh, and sometimes we'll face uh, uh, the chastening hand of God. Uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, winds may be blowing, uh, but we're going to make it, church. The waves may be beating, but we're going to make it. The Bible said in verse number 18, And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. You have, you have felt the waves beating against your life. Paul said that they was exceedingly tossed. I mean, the waves were beating against the ship. You see that as not only individually as a Christian, but corporately as a church. I'm telling you, the waves of adversity are beating against the church and against the Christian in this day. I mean, we're living in hard times, aren't we? Ephesians 6 talks about the evil day. We're there I'm telling you, we're in that evil day. There's, there's a lot of things that are beating against the ship. Those waves are beating, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it tonight. I'll say this and I'm done. Not only the winds may be blowing and the waves may be beating, the worries may be building, but we're going to make it. Amen. The Bible said in verse number 20, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Those worries were building on board that ship. No, no sun. Where's my piano player? Come on, brother. Give me just something softly. No sun, no stars. You say, preacher, they just want no light. No, that ain't, that's not the case. The sun and the stars and those heavens is how, they, is how they navigated. That's how they, that's how they were directed upon that water. No sun was shining. No stars were shining. They lost their direction. Didn't know which way to go. Didn't know where they were. That's no GPS. No kind of locating device. I'm talking about didn't have no idea where they were going. And can you imagine on board of that ship how those worries were beginning to build and, and just like it is in your heart, in my heart, there's a lot of worries, aren't they? A lot of worries about what's in store in the future I don't worry so much about me brother don't worry I, I'm pretty settled brother Doug I, I'm not worried so much about me but I'm worried about these uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not so much concerned about myself as I am this next generation I'm worried about them you say, preacher, it's in God's hands. I understand that. But brother, I'm telling you, it seems like the direction is lost. And I'm worried, my God, what's going to be in their future? What, what lays ahead when, when there is no more Doug Foster? What's going to be when, when there is no more what we have here tonight? I'm te what, what's going to be of that? What's going to be of that next generation? A lot of worries. They relied on those stars and the sun for direction. They were looking up. They were depending. They were depending on that, that heaven that they see. They were looking in the right direction. But they needed to look a little bit further. 
You remember just Monday? Where was the direction of everybody? He's looking up. The direction was right. Listen, the distance was wrong. Ha. Now it ain't the heavens we see. <laughs> it's on into that third heaven. Oh my, that's where we need to be looking for our help tonight. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, uh, lifting up our head uh, and looking to the third heaven uh, uh, for our help in this life. Paul's given that assurance. Paul trusted God and Paul trumpeted God. He said, I believe God. That's a good thing to trump it, isn't it? Where's your trust at? I believe God. And Paul said, Fear not, thou must be brought before Caesar. Listen, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. What a promise tonight. Do you know what Paul was saying? We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Now the promise was concerning them. The promise wasn't concerning the ship. We're going to make it. That ship, you say, preacher, how far did that ship take Paul and how far did it take them prisoners and all that was aboard? How far did it take them? It took them as far as they needed to go. <laughs> it took them all the way to the shore. That's as far as they needed to go. You say, but it wasn't, it wasn't intact. It doesn't matter if it was intact or not. If it was in pieces, if it was in parts, it was still it's still ship. And that ship took them as far as they needed to go. And thank God I'm going to tell you there's going to come a day when we're going to reach yon shore. Amen. And I, and I believe, I wonder if you'll help me right here. I, I believe if we sound, I believe if we sounded with the fathoms tonight, I, I we'd find that we're nearing the shore. I, I mean, we're getting so close. I, I mean, I can almost see the lights. I, I can almost hear the sounds. I, and this ship's going to take us I, as far as we need to go. I, and then, thank God, we're going to step off uh, on the sweet banks of deliverance uh, in a land where there's going to be no more storms. Uh, I say hallelujah. We're going to make it. Uh, oh, bless his name tonight. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.